and welcome back. I'm really excited to try something a little bit different today and to challenge myself to create something based off of a random wheel choosing it for me. I'll admit I like to have control over my projects, but I thought it would be fun to spin a wheel to see what category and then reach into a bin of yarn to see what yarn. And then I'm gonna challenge myself to see what I can come up with combining those things together. So my categories are broken up kind of by uh, body part. <laughs> so when I say feet, it could mean socks or slippers or I don't know, maybe those are kind of the only options. Or neck could be like scarf or cowl or shawl, head, etc. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, but I will say that I do give myself permission to use a smaller size. So if I choose sweater, I can do a child size. I'm also allowing myself to use patterns, but I'm hoping to not use them like exactly to pattern. Uh, but oftentimes I do use a pattern as kind of my starting point and I will just give credit to where I am starting from and then show the changes that I make based off of what I selected. So why don't we get started by spinning our little wheel. All right, so we got stuffed animal. That's gonna be really fun. All right, so this is what we've got. And I feel like we have a good selection. Everything from hand spun to dyed and uh, a bunch of acrylic options. So I don't wanna be biased toward anything. I just wanna reach in and grab one. So I'm gonna close my eyes or turn away and uh, see what I end up with. Okay, <laughs> this is some hand spun. This is some hand spun that is Falkland that I applied with some whole scar and super soft. It is orange and pink applied together. And I do have one more of these. Um, so I have pretty good yardage to choose from. But now we have to get planning who we're gonna make with this orangey pinky yarn. So here they are both together. So this is the yardage that I will be using for my character. So first up, we need to prep our yarn and get it more usable format than in the skein. So after staring for this a while, I decided that this orange had to go fox. I thought maybe of doing like a pumpkin character or just something totally off colored, but as I was winding it, I couldn't get fox out of my head. So that is what I'm going with. I'm gonna be adding in this cream yarn because it really just won't work without having some white accents, but let's get started. Oh, and I'm doing crochet. I can see my crochet hook pointing out the corner there. Yes, we're gonna try to crochet this fox, which I have never done before, but I looked up some online, both real foxes and then to see some of the um, other crochet foxes that have been made and I think I'm just gonna make it up as I go. I have not made a magic circle in a while and uh, yeah it shows. Okay I think we're getting the swing of it now. Yeah. So I know in a lot of art videos um, a lot of people show their progress but in crochet and in knitting there's yeah, there's a lot of this where you can't really see what's going on. So I'm gonna mostly show you the highlights, but I just wanted to throw it out there. How many of you are crocheters? I know most people here on my channel seem to be knitters, but I know there's some crocheters out there and I'd be really interested in hearing if you are or if you are someone who makes stuffed animals or if you're just someone here to watch. All are definitely good. Um, you don't have to have made anything to watch this, but I'm just curious to see. I always really enjoy crocheting stuffed animals animals uh, but we have a lot of them and I was thinking about rounding up some different yarns to do a little comparison video of them um, but yeah they're really fun to make although yeah they can quickly take over the house <laughs> in my experience so I didn't sample this yarn prior to knitting with it and since it is a hand spun like there's no pictures to look up of it so I see it's looking a little more pink maybe more pink dominant than I was expecting it's early. It's looking kind of orange on the screen. Just in person, I was noticing that there's a lot of pink going on. But that's okay. Nothing wrong with a pink fox. So I've been here just plugging away at this little head shape. You can see it's coming along. I've got the, um, the width figured out. His head's going to be this wide. So I was about to start on the cream and I thought I would stop and look up a picture of a fox and I realized that even though most of the cartoon foxes have white around the eyes, the real foxes, the real red fox, only have the white under the eyes. So I'm going to keep going with the orange a little bit longer and then start with the cream. And I'm about ready to start adding in the cream for the tops of the eyes. So let's start adding in a few of these cream stitches. Mm 
So you can see I ended up with this kind of football shape to give a little bit of space for where it would be wider around the mouth for the fox. And I've made the nose. I don't have an end or it's not stuffed yet, but you can kind of see how it's looking here. Tried to do the orange on the top and the white on the bottom, trying to make it as true to kind of like the fox coloring as possible. I will put real stuffing in just trying to uh, tuck my ends in for now, but I'm going to check out the eye situation. I have this little case of safety eyes that I picked up on Amazon a while ago go and it has a couple different sizes of eyes in it I usually go largest I just like the big eye look but you know as I'm kind of checking at this I'm gonna try a few different sizes and see what looks best and it's always good to try with the nose too because it does kind of change the look of it I always find eye placement can really change the expression and the face of a animal like this you know that really wide set low eye really gives a different look than when they're really high and close together and so it's just fun to play around and give the give the animal the expression you want and it really does help it come to life so for the nose here i'm trying to decide whether any of these noses any of these uh, safety eyes would work as a nose um i wanted to try just a round dot but i think in the end i'm gonna just sew it on with some yarn I am gonna show quite a lot of the face part of it because I think it's those little details that are hardest to explain in a pattern and yet it can really change uh, the finished item the most. So I'm going ahead here, not showing all the details of the crochet, but I'm gonna show a lot more of the assembly and making like the little decisions that make it come to life. So this is the body of the fox. <laughs> you can see he's gonna be standing up and we're gonna be adding some more uh, anthropomorphized details later on, so stay tuned for that. But we're gonna start with the seaming and there are so many little pieces to put together on this starting with the face I really wanted to assemble the face so it would be easier to see uh, What the what it will look like as I'm trying on other parts of it <laughs> But I decided to go with the cream on the cream and then I'm gonna switch over to a orange seaming thread or yarn so that it just blends in a lot better I've heard that some people really don't like seaming, but I really don't mind it too much. Um, but I don't do a, probably like a great job of it. I just kind of like whip stitch it in there. But I always feel like it looks pretty good in the end. So I just stick with that. I had added the nose with the yarn and I'm gonna go on with the eyes. And I decided since that fox look typically has the yellow eyes, I'm using that as kind of the eye color around the edge. I always just put it in and then leave the ends hanging so I can adjust it and see how much it needs to be pulled up later. And I haven't put in the safety eyes yet, so that gives me a little bit of wiggle room. And then with the black, I'm gonna try to create more of an eye shape rather than just the black dot. So I wanted it to come in because most of the fox eyes kind of come in towards the nose area. There's just the way the coloring is. So I'm giving him kind of the top eyelash line. I don't know what you would call that, but it's going to appear like the outer part of the eye. These little details are so fun and ever so slightly placing it differently really does change the expression. I haven't decided the backstory to this fox yet. I wanted to kind of see it come to life and see what it looks like to me. And spoiler alert, I think it really came together really fun. But for right now, I am just doing it uh, what seems right and then deciding every detail as it goes. It's not really planned out in advance. So I'm kind of showing you the process here, but I'm gonna be honest, it took some trial and error to get these eyes to match. And I think after this one here, I had to rip it out and redo it because it just was not similar enough to the other one, or I don't know, I like the other one better. So it took a little bit of adjusting. So this is the fox's face at this point. I'm going to be moving on from here. I'm starting with black and working on the arms. Black paws on all four paws. And now this is the tail. Just showing you a little glimpse of it with the cream and I'm doing that zigzag pattern. I think it turned out really nice to adjust from the white to the orange. Now working on the ears, we have black tips at the top and then it's going to be orange at the back with a kind of white triangle in the front. And I'm doing them like this rounded, kind of more like a bear ear. And then you'll see later on, I'm going to pinch them closed to make them pointed more like a fox ear. I'm just switching colors here to make that white in the front. Oh, and we're not done on our pieces yet. We are getting a belly for this fox. White belly. So I'm just doing a line of single crochets and then going around to make it an oval shape. When I'm creating animals or creating pretty like any kind of knitting or crochet, it's always good to try it on and just keep trying it until it is the way you like it. 
All right, here are my pieces. We are ready for some more assembly. We've got those ears and this tapestry needle is going to be your best friend on this. <laughs> I'm starting by seaming it, just pinching it flat and putting in a few stitches to give it a more pointy shape. And that really does help make it look more like a fox and less like a bear. So we have lots of stuffing and seaming and stuffing and seaming. I really like making these animals and you know I think what piqued my interest the most was that book that I, I know I've referenced it if you've been here before. It's called Animal Friends of Pika Pow. It really changed how I started making animals and uh, it really, I don't know, I guess it opened it back up for me. I've made a lot of like small toys for my kids before but her designs really inspired me to think about like the clothing choices and just adding on little details that make it so fun and really take it from just like this is an animal to like a on character. Lots of little pieces to seam on. <laughs> this step takes a while, but I really, like I said, I don't mind this step because it seems like it's it's the stage of bringing it all to life. It takes all these little lumps and ovals and all of a sudden creates this character. I tried to sew on the neck pretty tightly because I'm trying to avoid that dreaded floppy neck syndrome. <laughs> I like it to be nice and stiff and hold its head up without having to worry about it. I have never knit a stuffed animal with hand spun before and I wasn't sure what to think of it but I think the fact it was non-superwash really did help because it gives it a lot of stiffness. Obviously it's not going to be very washable like compared to some of the other ones except for the stuffed animals that like live on the kids beds. I don't wash them too often or anything but this one might have to be treated a little more gently just because it is with the non-superwash hand spun. I stuff most of my animals with some uh, polyfill that comes from Walmart pillows. I can see here that tail is not quite stiff enough, so I'm adding on a little bit more, just testing it. If you add too much, it's going to stick straight out the back, and I didn't want that, but I didn't want it super floppy either. But yeah, I just, I find the pillows are less expensive and basically the same thing as just buying the bag of polyfill, uh, but it just depends what you like. I know there's a lot of natural options too, like wools to stuff if you are making an all natural animal, but I usually go for the cheap stuff. So here is our fox. And now I'm really excited for the next step, which is the clothing. I'm choosing these little scraps. These are all scraps of hand spun from the sweater I just made for myself. And so the fox is getting one too, and the pink's gonna be our edging color. But first I had a little idea as I've been putting this fox together and she just struck me as perhaps a librarian type. So I had this idea that maybe she needed some kind of quirky pink glasses. So I'm just using a chain to kind of experiment, but I'm thinking I'm gonna need something stiffer. So using a pipe cleaner here to, as my guide, trying to decide how I could fix glasses on her. So I decided I'm going to try to crochet around the pipe cleaner and, and that didn't really work. So I tried wrapping the pipe cleaner and that didn't really work. So I'm doing a different style of crocheting around the pipe cleaner. And can you guess it? It also didn't really work. So in the end, I'm going for an eye cord, um, which is a pretty simple knitted uh, design where you, I only cast on these three stitches and I just wrap it around the back. I'm using my interchangeable needle sets I just don't use the cord because you do your three stitches and then slide it to the other side of the needle. It's a pretty simple way to make a really nice cord that looks like it has knitting all the way around. So I have the pipe cleaner kind of trapped in the middle of it. Definitely works the best out of all the methods I've tried so far but there are some messy sections as uh, you'll notice in the end. <laughs> Here they are, the finished glasses. You can see a little bit of the pipe cleaner through, but I'm okay with it. 
So now we're onto the sweater. I'm just crocheting and again, trying it on my fox to see what is going to be the best size. I decided a little hand spun kind of striped sweater between these different colors that I have here would be the best choice for her. And it's gonna have, like I said, the pink edging around it. And I don't really have a plan. I'm doing it kind of like a raglan style like I would for a knitted sweater. But uh, yeah, here it is, the finished cardigan. <laughs> I didn't put long sleeves on it just because this was all that yarn. And you'll have to excuse me, I had a little dye spill and some of my fingers are a little bit black right now. Um, so hopefully that won't bother you too much, but you may notice it. So we're trying it on, and this is our Foxy wearing her cardigan. Now, she is a little bit naked down below, so I tried to think what would work with the tail and decided to go with a little skirt. Used this yellow and gave it a few polka dots. I thought it added a little bit of fun, and I decided to just add a French knot with this cream-colored cotton yarn, and so I'm just sewing on each one individually and, yeah, doing a little French knot for a little polka dot. The skirt is a wrap skirt. I really couldn't figure out the best way to get it over the tail, uh, so I decided to wrap it around, and then I could kind of tie it on the right thickness. Um, it was either that or add elastic. So I decided to do the wrap skirt. And so that gives room for her tail to be underneath. It's also really easy to remove. Um, and I think she's cute without clothes too. The clothes just kind of create the character side of it. So here are her glasses. And you know, I've got this issue with like, how do you hook it on the ears? And so nothing was really looking right. <laughs> But I had this thought, maybe you can see where this is going, to pull out some jewelry chains and some beads. And once I've made my selection, I'm actually gonna be hot gluing all of my beads on where they belong. And it's going to be that chain that seemed to fit that sort of librarian aesthetic. Now I know these types of glasses would still have the sidearms on them, but we're gonna take some liberties here for our Foxy Librarian and uh, just use the chain. And I think it added a really fun little touch and it added some new different like textures into it that's not just yarn. Now, while I was looking at my beads, I found these little brown ones and it reminded me of a little toggle. So I decided to sew it onto the sweater to help so it could have a fastening if we needed it. I do think it's cute open, but it was curling back a little bit. So I'm just sewing it on with the pink thread and it adds, again, just little touches that bring it to life, I think. I'm gonna crochet a little loop so it can be functional and sew it on the opposite side to cross it over a little bit. All right, here is our finished fox. Librarian Fox. <laughs> I know her skirt keeps falling down, so her tummy's sticking out. Maybe it doesn't fit the look quite so well, but I think she's really cute. She's got a nice little outfit on. I think the orange and pink hand spun really worked out in our favor. It kind of gives it more of a cartoony look, uh, not super realistic, which again, goes with the outfit. <laughs> the chain on the glasses to me is one of the surprising points of this that I wasn't expecting to add on, but I think makes it super fun. Seeing her eyes through the glasses or peeking over the top really brings it all together. Now, a finished character isn't complete without a name, so I'm deeming this to be Beatrice the Fox, who works at the library and is very serious about keeping her books and sharing her books. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye! Mm -hmm.